breakfast puppies? Welcome to Have Movies Will Game, the only podcast on the globe where we take you, our friendly listener, through the best and worst movies of yesterday and today, and then discuss ways that you can play them at your gaming table. In every episode, our intrepid hosts, Matthew, Dusty, and Nathaniel, will filibuster fondly over facts and feelings of your favorite films, and then get to the glorious gaming goodness, giving game masters great gimmicks on generating golden genius. Have Movies Will Game, brought to you through the electronic wonder of the internet. Now, let's start the show! <laughs> that's fine I, that's kind of one of the points that we're doing this is we're nerds yeah. all right should we uh get into it we've been into it dude yeah we've we've been going so tell us matthew about what just happened a few minutes ago no i don't like hot lead-ins <laughs> <laughs> so earlier this week rex barkwood i think barked all and you complained to me about not knowing last names <laughs> it's called pronouncey <laughs> Pronouncy. <laughs> Shut up, I'm reading. <laughs> Rex Barkdahl of Palladian Games actually sent us a care package. Uh, apparently, he's heard our podcast, and it came with this really thoughtful handwritten letter um, that addressed each of us, and they gave us games tailored to each of us, and it was really awesome and really sweet, and Nathaniel and I fought to the death <laughs> over... And I a, witnessed it. A, a hand-signed picture from Kevin Ciambietta, and... It's 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 just been a good day. We can it's finally afford day. pizza. Yeah. Thank you, patrons. <laughs> the gaming companies that were the heroes of my early gaming are sending us stuff. I'm I'm just really glad to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. This wasn't the best day uh, for me on a day to day basis, but coming home and having this happen just sort of made my hell made my whole month. I just yeah. started. I've been <laughs> I've been looking forward to this day actually for yeah. for the week and for this past week. I mean, not only. For the movie, but for opening that care package, it was really cool. I've and been sitting on it for a week. I know. And, and just <laughs> just because like just cut the bottom. Of it. No. <laughs> like you are a good evil princess, but <laughs> but I'm not gonna do it. Otherwise, when we record, I'll be disingenuous and I don't want to be that. Well, and it was really exciting. You can actually catch the unboxing of the box on our YouTube channel at uh, Have Movies Will Games on YouTube. Yep, we'll be posting that. We'll be sharing links. So that that's not something that we're going to lock behind our Patreon. That's definitely no. That, that's that's for all open. of us. Yeah. Now the, now the funny thing is because I know I have I have voiced multiple times through our our numerous episodes that I I was never a big uh, I never really knew of the gaming system that well as much as maybe you Matthew or or you Nathaniel and it was really really awesome to receive these these gifts. Oh, signed books. I yeah, got signed, uh, signed book. Yeah, what did, what did I you got, get, Matthew? I uh, got Robotech, The Shadow Chronicles, the role-playing game, which I already had, but the one I have is going to Nathaniel <laughs> because I have a signed, signed Robotech book with Kevin Sambietta, Wayne Smith, Julius Rosenstein. It's, it's so good, and it's, you know, it's it, they, this was done for us because it's dated 2019. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so cool. I also got uh, For Riffs. Uh, the Phase World, that's the uh, Dimension Book 3. I think you got Phase... And Phase World yeah. 2. Yeah, yeah, Phase World 2. Yeah. And, and that, they, Which is a fantastic, fantastic yeah. setting for Palladium. And they sent me Dead Rain, the zombie role-playing game. Which I didn't know Palladium made. Is it's, it, yeah, is it, it says modern? Right there. When, when's the... Uh, Palladium Books Presents. Yeah. Is it modern? Uh it's the Palladium system. At, oh, from I'm what sorry. I it says right there, and it's in your hands. Why I, don't you open the book? I don't book? know the gaming system. <laughs> open the book, author. Just look when it was written. Uh, uh, this first printing was November 2008. This is the fourth so it's, printing it's for 2018. Yeah, 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 it's the okay. fourth printing. Yeah. And I got some Ninja Turtles books. That's yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. And then they also sent me the Rift's Adventure Guide. I'm the, the That's really is, cool. The artwork is stunning but in all of Dusty these. Dusty got the Riffs campaign yeah, book. Yeah, the is ultimate it signed? No, I already no, they're all signed. God damn. They are all signed. <laughs> and this really, really, really awesome they also art. Sent, they also art. sent us some yeah. Robotech artwork. art. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> well, thanks, it. Rex. We appreciate yeah, thank you. Thank you for everything. And sending us these things. But we got a movie to talk about now. Yes, we do. No, let's just talk about this for the next hour and a half, and, and then we'll talk how to game Palladium. And for the record, you're listening to Have Movies Will Game. I'm Matthew. And you... I am Dusty. And I'm Nathaniel. <laughs> and this time we're doing... True Lies. 
the 1994 James Cameron Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, uh, spy extravaganza. It's. I would it, call this an extravaganza. It, That's it, a good it word. It is a little over yeah. the top in some of the areas. It's Bondy. It's what? Bondy. As in James Bondy? No, as in bondage. Oh, well, yeah. There were yes, some, of course, James Bondy. <laughs> I know. There were some references no. to Bondy. Well, a few the, the, times. Fun, the funny thing is what you make about about <laughs> Bondy, about James Bond, is that James Bond, the, that franchise was kind of on its nosedive. It was in its in its like death gurgle because of uh, the Living Daylights with with uh, Timothy Dalton, which I personally do like. I think, I think Timothy Dalton is an amazing actor. I, I do too. I think he's underrated. I think he was a very good James Bond. But I I've think, loved him since The Lion in Winter, I which think, we will get to. I swear to God. I I think his James Bonds were underrated, and I think it was just because of bad direction. I will agree with that. The nineties, they that the that just spy, death spiral of the Bond franchise. By the time it got to Pierce Brosnan, and you're like. Oh, God, no more. Thank God for the video game that brought it all back to life. Well, Thank God for Daniel Craig for well, yeah, doing but a really good job bringing Cameron it back to Cameron wanted to to start a, like, a, a Bond franchise, and this was supposed to kick off that whole Bond, that new kind of Bond franchise, which is what we saw. Schwarzenegger was supposed to play like three movies for the, the three, uh, three different movies for this. But you are right. Bond in my generation as a teenager became synonymous with Goldeneye, Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Yeah. on the Nintendo 64. Like we would go to school and me and my buddies were leaving school. We're like, hey, what are we gonna do tonight? We look at each other. Bond, Goldeneye. Bond, yeah. Bond. Bond was our code word for let's go get high and play Goldeneye. <laughs> my my friends uh, Joey and Patrick, or, I'm sorry, Joey and John, we would spend hours playing this game on a Friday Saturday night at their apartment. And uh, they had it down pat so well, they memorized the maps. Oh, yeah. So playing them was like a bullshit thing because they knew where everything was. You it, just got to commit to something sometimes. Though. Sometimes, I, yeah. I, I commit to a lot of things, whether you believe not me or not. Not the important things. I mean, like Goldeneye. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really like the N64 that much. I didn't like the For polygon sakes. The polygon graphics. It was, it, it was fucking horrible. As opposed to what at the time? Well, there was the PS1, which I thought was better. It was. I, the PS1 was a better yeah. machine, I think. But it didn't have, what was it called? Goldeneye? Uh, it didn't have Bond. Yeah. It didn't, didn't have slapping only. <laughs> <laughs> the judo chop. This is, well, this is true. If you played that game and you turned on, there, you could play deathmatch modes. Yeah. And if you turned and on. And that was the first. But if you turned on the different uh, modes like uh, deathmatch, slapping only, one hit kill, you're like, yes. You're just running each other down, trying to be the first person to slap. And the best part is, if you play odd job and you crouch, no one can reach yeah. far enough down to hit you. <laughs> we we would play we would play on the golden gun setting, and we just we would just laugh all night long. Pizza, soda, oh, yeah. and 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 golden eye. Good time. Well, that's what happened to Bond. Yeah. Uh, true anyways, lies. this true lies. Yeah. So true lies. Is actually based off of a French film called uh, La Totale, and James Cameron actually had no idea of what was going on with this movie, and Schwarzenegger brought in this movie and said, hey, I think we should do a version of this. I want to play the lead role. James Cameron didn't really think that Schwarzenegger would be a good spy, and then read the script and was like, yeah, you can you can do this. this well, he does dance like a two by four. That tango scene is that's a lot of good editing. He he spent four months learning how to tango because he wanted to look as <laughs> he good. So as, did not he, learn how to tango. I know he wanted to, apparently he said in an interview he wanted to look as good or better than Al Pacino in Scent of a Woman, which came out a couple years prior to that. So that song is Por Una Cabeza by, I believe, Carlos Gardel. And it is. The one song when Hollywood needs a tango mm -hmm. in any movie, they pick that, that one. song. I it's remember the first time I heard woman. it, The Sin of a Woman, Al Pacino, as a blind man, did a way better job dancing to that song than Sorry, Arnie, did you, you twice have great in that skills, movie. Arnold, if you're ever listening. You, you are a fantastic person and a fantastic actor. Yes. But <laughs> maybe not the world's best dancer, and that's okay <laughs> because you can pick up a car. You know? <laughs> You don't get to have it all, Arnie. This is the... Please don't pick up my car. S your car is a hamster, so it would be very easy to pick up, I think. It's more like a guinea pig. It's bigger than a hamster. It's actually a toaster. You're both wrong. <laughs> that, that style of car is called a toaster. 
This is the, I think, second movie we've done with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the second movie for James Cameron, I think. We did Aliens and Conan. Correct. Yes. So that would be the third. Oh, no, no, no. No, no. Yep. second movie for Cameron, second movie for Schwarzenegger. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we should do more Schwarzenegger movies is what you're I, saying. I'm I, fine with this. We, we could do Predator. I'm fine with that. We, we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, Schwarzenegger's got some good movies. Yes, he really in, does. In his repertoire he, he's he's we, got some kindergarten cops lurking around in there too. But well, I thought Kindergarten Cop was hilarious. One of the most quotable movies ever because of those kids. Yes. <laughs> but, okay. So, so this, this whatever w- happened to speaking of Arnold, whatever happened to Tom Arnold? Whatever happened to him? Tom Arnold kind of fell off the radar. Also, Hollywood didn't really like him at this point in time. Because he was going through... The, well, it was nasty for a while, wasn't there? Yeah, like he was going through the divorce like... with Roseanne Barr and everything, and, and because he was also on on uh, the show that she did, and, and it just... That would be Roseanne. That, thank you. Uh, I wanted to say the Connors, but I know that's the new version, so mm. thank you. Uh, but he went in and auditioned for this role and didn't even think that he would get it, and James Cameron loved him so much... That James Cameron decided, listen, if Tom Arnold is not in this movie, we're not making this movie. I just liked watching him get thrown <laughs> up against walls by Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> He's a, he had good comic timing. And apparently, in a couple of the interviews that I read and 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 old interview uh, videos that I watched them, how they interact during the movie is exactly how they, they were you know, offset. You know what's funny <laughs> is that America hated Tom Arnold because of the divorce with Roseanne. And then America hated Roseanne. <laughs> so does that make Tom Arnold good again? Is that a, a negative and a negative makes a positive? So yeah, yes. is, that, is that my enemy's enemy? Don't know. I, I, <laughs> I'd have to do more research into it. I'm just going to say that Tom Arnold was pretty freaking funny in this movie. He, he, he was, really yeah. was. He, he was. He was, he was a, a funny. My uh, first character. favorite quote was when he's telling Arnold what's. You scan in the area. It's like, okay, we got some guards. We got some fur covered razor blades. It's like, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a that's a good way to describe a Doberman Pinscher. So initially, uh, there were the people that were up to play that the, his part uh, were Dan Aykroyd. Would have also been good. Mm-hmm. Dan Aykroyd can can really bring it. Sometimes. That would basically make them similar to their almost the same character from Sneakers. Yeah. I was going to say yeah. the same thing. That would have yeah. been Dan Aykroyd's character from Sneakers. Bill Murray was also up for that part. I would have rather seen Aykroyd. I think I have to agree with that. I think Bill Murray would have stolen too much of the scene. Also, this this was the middle of his, like, slappy comedy, not his more in-depth, ironic comedy. True. So, I mean, I, I don't think slappy he could... like what? We're Just, not talking Garfield. It, it, it's, it's, no, no, no. Because he did that because he didn't know what he was doing. It's oh, it's God, more... Right. It was It was more physical, like, like yuck, yuck comedy. Kind of like yeah. Kingpin, when he was in Kingpin. Or uh, uh, what about Bob? What about Bob was, was? I'm, I'm just no, saying he's what about Bob was eighty seven, eighty eight. Oh, okay, um, he was a little over the top. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then John Goodman was also slated to play that part, which I would have loved to yeah. see. Yeah, yeah. I'm a I'm a big John Goodman fan. Speaking of people connected to Roseanne, <laughs> <laughs> seven degrees of separation. Her and real then, husbands and her fake husbands. <laughs> uh, and then Steve Gutenberg of the no, Police Academy. No, 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 no. He was past this time. And uh, Joe Pesci was offered, but he turned it down. Which would have made it basically his Leo Getz character from Lethal Weapon 2. Yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't have seen that. I love no, that, Pesci, but not so in this. So do I. Yeah, yeah this no, would not have been no. been a good movie. And and like I said, James Cameron was the only person in Hollywood at the time who liked Tom Arnold. And <laughs> Thanks, James. We appreciate you making that happen. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that first scene of the movie. Yeah, at the, at the, major the social skills because yeah. yeah. he's literally just walking in and owning every interaction. Yeah, and he's executing things that I've seen people talk about in other spy fiction. It's like uh, it, even I think in some of the Bond training films or other stories where one of the things that they teach you is if you're going to go into an interaction with someone you don't know, open it. Yeah, and, it. and not only that, yeah. you, you know, just act like you're supposed to be there. Act like you belong. Yeah. And and was, and he he just walked in, insulted the food, mm-hmm. <laughs> shook hands with everyone. Oh, it's been a long time. And it moved on. And everyone's like, yeah, it's even been to the too point long. where he went upstairs when he came back out. He's like, oh, where's the John at? In, in perfect <laughs> Arabic. He's like, I'm looking for the John. Where's it at? I do like that. The subtitles, I don't believe that he can speak perfect Arabic, <laughs> but I do like that. The subtitles did say 
speaking perfect, perfect Arabic. Arabic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I I really like the hurry up, plug in the modem, and I just no. oh god. <laughs> You know, okay. pulls out this and, half a shoebox looking Windows thing. Windows 3.1. I yeah. mean, it came from <laughs> Windows 3.1. I will say one thing that I liked about it is they didn't overwhelm you with techno jargon. They didn't go for crazy, weird hacking no, special no, they didn't. effects. It was literally him just typing into some things. It it wasn't hacking the Gibson. It wasn't aliens, any of that stuff. It looked like actual computer usage that made sense for the time. Yeah, One of the things that... I, I, this movie could could be redone today with some changes, but on a technological side of it, even still use Schwarzenegger. They've had old bonds. Oh yeah, they've had yeah. old bonds. But I mean, just in the fact that you that you'd have to change out some of the computer hardware, but it could be redone pretty much shot for shot today. When we were watching it last night, my wife was like, "Why did he even have to go in there?" Because I'm like, "Well, honestly, all he did is walk in." place a thing and walk out yeah he, yeah. he, yeah, he didn't even go back and get it it yeah. was just eh. can yep. we talk about jimmy lee curtis for a second please feel free <laughs> <laughs> all right she apparently worked out every day for yeah, six she months did. to get that body for that dancing and she brought in her own lingerie that, that was that that's awkward what she wears beginning to that dancing and then owning it mm-hmm I've seen that at my work so many and times. And then, <laughs> then she falls but yeah. gets back up. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was so good. That was well done. Yeah. I, I like the part where she sees herself in the in the mirror and takes off the ruffles yeah. and takes rips the dress off. Now I remember seeing this in the movie, both you know, I'm sitting next to my dad and my mom, and I hear my dad go, Oh good God. <laughs> <laughs> and she my was mom just kind of like elbows movie. him. What? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say? I said she was smoking hot in that movie. Oh yeah. 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 She did a really good job of that transformation from being complete mousy, mm-hmm. you know, everyday woman, every, everyday office, the very drab office woman. worker mm-hmm. to just being like, okay, lipstick, torn dress, sexy dance. And then she goes right back into what's going on. Yeah. Well done. It was really good. I like that it wasn't an immediate Hollywoodized character transformation into her suddenly being a badass yeah yeah i i did have a problem with it at the end like though, she it was, drops it was the gun she year. was very much not a badass no I, I, she drops the gun down the stairs oh that was horrible that was, that was a fumble that, that was a one followed by a 20 followed by another 20 <laughs> well if, if it was savage worlds what that was is that she rolled her skill die and got a one but she rolled her wild die and got a six which popped into a six, which popped into a six like eight times. And the GM's like, all right, well, uh, you kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> this was directed, as we said, by James Cameron. Sorry, hold on. Oh, go ahead. You said something about a year later. Oh, the one thing that I didn't like, uh, your comment about how she, you know, the, the flip of her, I didn't like that it was just a year later and she was a complete badass. Now, I understand. She's not Arnold. She can learn to dance that tango in a year. I understand <laughs> working, probably working for the for the federal government in that, you know, clandestine Omega, you know, group that Charlton Heston ran, which. Charlton fucking Heston. So there, there were two things. So he's, his character was based off of Nick Fury. And, no. Yes. <laughs> and the Omega, you know, they, they, whatever the name yeah, of the yeah. corporation was, that was based off of his movie, The Omega Man. They slid that in there. If nice. You didn't know, but um, yeah, one year is just not one enough year to be that. I a uh, couple because those. I mean, Harry trained for he was a spy seventeen years. He yeah. said, you know, two years after they, you know, before they got married. So. I don't think she'd be that much of a badass, and I don't think that they would dump her into let's, a major. Let's, let's talk. She learned to dance and gain self confidence. That's, that's about that's all it. she it's, does. It's, not, it's yeah. not like it's they hand sh- waving. It's hand it's waving. It's not like they they showed her chewing through mobs of mooks with her kung fu. I she was she was there. You know oh, she was okay. going as his escort. Oh, maybe has a little it. pocket pistol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a little lipstick po- you, pistol. You certainly can teach someone to shoot and to dance, Arnold, in a year. <laughs> Please oh. don't lift my car. <laughs> So this was directed by James Cameron. Uh, he, we if know. you don't know who James Cameron is, we've we've got the, he did the, the the Avatar series that's coming out. Oh, the other one, you ones. know, I'm proud of you. Good what? job. What you led with Avatar? Oh, okay. As opposed to Aliens, <laughs> the He's Abyss, two for two, three for three, Titanic, mm. four for four. No, no, he's listing well-known movies. Oh, this oh, needs oh, to oh, be oh, encouraged. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He was also the screenwriter for this movie. 
Uh, so Darby O'Gill and the Little People or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> it's hard with James Cameron. He turns out some real gems. He, he, so. Yeah, well, duh. Yeah, Terminator series. <laughs> I mean, come on, yeah, it's James fucking Cameron. I'm yeah. I'm looking forward to the newest Terminator that negates everything after T2 that he's a part of. I, I imagine we're going to put Terminator on the list and we're going to have a lot to talk about. Yes. Yeah, we, we absolutely will. should do that. Yeah. I think we should do a, a big episode and just do Terminator 1 and 2. As as one flick? Yes. As, as one episode? Yeah. I'm, I'd be down. I think we should do Terminator 2 and then maybe record Terminator 1 as a bonus follow-up. Let's talk right. about that later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's definitely do T2. Yeah. <laughs> I'm game for it. So Arnold had several of his famous quote moments. Yes. Uh, yeah. Here cool off <laughs> mm-hmm. oh so the funny thing about that is that uh cameron had hired some of the like biggest named comedians to help write the jokes in the movie and at the end of the day he did all not, fired he did yeah he didn't you're like fired. where they were going so he said whoever yeah, did that is in trouble you're, that was james cameron that he wrote that joke in was the you're fired james because he didn't like he wanted corny jokes yeah and nobody was giving him like the level of corn that he wanted so he fired them. He let them go. He's like, guys, this isn't working out. I can write better corny jokes. All right. Speaking of corny jokes, Bill fucking Paxton. This to me is probably <laughs> his best role ever. I won't say his best role, but no. he, he was really he good. Owned he, he owned it. He owned the it. sleazy. Certain things. The vet gets them wet. That's a good one. <laughs> but I think my favorite what the fuck thing that came out of his mouth was an ass like a 10 year old boy oh god, oh, god. No. what does that even mean <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean i i think no no, no. He, he has the best one the best one was if not for me then for your country, <laughs> <laughs> your country. <laughs> i also like the ones he said something like you know the thought her thighs are steaming they're so hot or something like dude that. arnold as a jilted husband is terrifying oh, God. <laughs> there is so much murder <laughs> in those steely steely austrian eyes well just that like <laughs> mental moment where he just like bashes his head in oh and you're like did they just go oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> i i like the part where he's looking through the binoculars and he breaks yeah. the lens <laughs> no he is terrifying yeah. when he thinks he's being cheated on uh-huh. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yes, and the, the, where they're at dinner, and he's like, "So you had an exciting day," and she starts like shaking the coffee cups, and it starts shaking. I thought that was that was perfect on screen chemistry between the two. <laughs> Sorry, it just reminded me of the uh, also the truth serum scene was really that was good. I think that, that was, was some good one acting of on Arnie's part. Did yeah, you yeah. kill anybody? Yes, but they were all they were bad. All bad. <laughs> Or okay, when again back to that first scene because that first that first do it. It's okay to spend time. So good when the two of Tom Arnold and the computer guy are in the van, and the computer guy's like, "Yes, I got it. Got it like a sexy woman. I'm gonna do this." And Tom Arnold's like, "Just copy the goddamn files." Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really good. But but the uh, that chase through the snow. Yeah. Okay, did that place just have like a dozen guys already suited up in skis, holding guns, ready yes, to launch? Yes, because a good, a good villain is prepared. Yeah, but Cobra Commander doesn't just have I was troopers. He has mention Cobra. snow snakes. Mm-hmm. He has uh, <laughs> snow serpents, excuse me. He has the Crimson Guard. He has guys that fight in the air, guys that fight in the jungle, and they're all ready to go because he's a good villain. So this is G.I. Joe the role-playing game. Pretty much. <laughs> This I'd is a live action G.I. Joe movie I before G.I. Joe made that a movie. Game. Yeah. No, sadly, not not before they made a G.I. Joe movie. It was really bad. I actually, well, okay. No, anyway. Like something else. Yeah. That that whole first sequence to me was so ridiculous. It made no sense and it was fucking awesome. Also, <laughs> is, I don't I don't think they made a pistol with 19 rounds in the mag back then. Oh, you counted also, right? Yeah, I counted. <laughs> well, he's a he's a he's a he's a spook, so maybe they have expanded clips. Mags. Stop Mags, it. sorry, thank you. I don't um, know. Mm-hmm. Maybe, uh, maybe it was just a really small caliber. He was killing them with twenty two. A very large target, and no one. Was well, here's the really thing: good he's at not him. that big. And one of the things I noticed is when he first walks into the ballroom, I don't know if he was walking on a raised platform that they just didn't show that shoulder shot. You know, his shoulders as yeah. they walk in, and he's towering above everybody. Like he's what, like five ten? No, he's he's like six. He's six one. This has gone up over the years. I'm not sure I believe it. I'm I'm pretty sure. He is big. However, he is not big in comparison to people such as Wilt Chamberlain and Andre the Giant, 
There's no, a really no, good no. scene of both of them in, in the behind the scenes. Is, is he for really Conan that the tall? Destroyer. Yeah. Arnold's huge, but there's a really good series of photographs from behind the scenes on Conan the Destroyer of him standing between yeah. Will Chamberlain and Andre the Giant, and they're holding him up by the arms, <laughs> and his feet are dangling <laughs> off the ground, and yeah. he looks like a puppet. So per the interwebs, he is yeah. six foot two. I swear to God, that's gone up over the years. Dwayne The Rock Johnson is 6'5". And Ronnie Coleman, one of his uh, protege of, of lifting, he's 5'11". He does lead, He does indeed lift, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the nerdiest things that was ever said. <laughs> he does indeed lift, lift bro. <laughs> uh, the raid on the trailer park. Loved it. That was beautiful. Such a waste yeah. of government resources. I, I want to go, I wanna go back to some. I want to go back to some. I want to go back to the chalet and everything. So, <laughs> oh, it was called the chalet. Yes. There's one thing that's that like I, saying the house. Yeah. The, the big house. Okay. So, on the technical side, oh, there, there, or, was, wait, there wait. was two different places that were filmed. It was the outside was this chalet in, in apparently Switzerland, but the inside was uh, a, a New York mansion, like could, a, a outer New York mansion. You could call it Chez Maison de Chalet. Okay. And <laughs> house, apparently house of house. <laughs> it was so cold in, in that mansion when they were filming that they had to bring in portable heaters for everybody uh, because a lot of women were wearing these extra dresses. So James Cameron gave all the extras like an additional 50 bucks to say, I'm sorry, you had to you know deal with being really cold for a night. Jason, I don't know if you listen to the podcast, but that's how you deal with extras. You actually don't, like, make them bring their own water. You give them an extra 50 bucks. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Who's Jason? It's a guy I work with. Oh. <laughs> local, local filmmaker. Okay. <laughs> I've done some things for him before. He's kind of brutal from time to time. But the thing, so, the, the fucking surveillance van was just sitting out in front of the chalet and there's like guards walking around. nobody noticed this van no just it was it was a good like uh half three quarter mile away yeah yeah but still wouldn't nobody there's would like a valley it? in between with a river and uh, i don't know i just kind of seemed like out of place like very out of it place. did i noticed that too but it wasn't as close as you're thinking because okay. you think a perimeter right you can mm -hmm. only keep a perimeter for so far oh, good point oh we still gotta kill him i mean that's a good one yeah, I like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm starting to like this guy. Oh, we still got to kill him. <laughs> I like her response. I like the interrogation scene and uh, the the growth that uh, she shows during it, mm -hmm. and what she what she says about what her life is and what she actually wants. And then she gets really mad and fucking breaks the glass. Fuck yeah! That was a beautiful fucking <laughs> moment. That was a yeah. beautiful scene. Yeah, it, it really was. Also, I really like the Walkman that the daughter had. <laughs> I so, always get this daughter and the daughter. And from why does Face she Off look like a raccoon? Confused because like the, the whole Liza movie. Dushku? Yeah, that's just the Liza Dushku. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there, there was a, there was one of the scenes <laughs> that was cut out of the movie. There was a there was a side little little tiny subplot that her boyfriend was in a band, and when she takes off of them, she wasn't going to school. She was she was going to like sing in the band. That was all cut out, but what you could hear is they swapped out with the song that was supposed to be playing on her Walkman, the Sunshine of Your Love song that's playing, this Cream, if I mm -hmm. remember correctly. That was actually her boyfriend's band covering that song, so that's why she happened to be listening to that, because it was her boyfriend on the, on the motorcycle. I will say, if you're looking at it now with the jaded eye of the modern viewer, you could see a lot of the green screen, or blue screen probably at the time, green. like uh, no, with, with, green. with the horse. And like there were some moments there, yeah, where you could like, yeah. oh, that is, that's not the same place. They created the largest green screen at the time, and it was a hundred and twenty feet Ooh. for that, uh, hundred and twenty feet long by I think it was like eighty feet so you wide. Get the horse moving? No, it wasn't for the horse. It was for the Harrier there at yeah. the end. Oh, yeah. I remember seeing that yeah. when the movie came out. That Harrier. I built a model of that when I was a kid. <laughs> so I love the Hawker Harrier. It's a yeah. badass jet, and it's still a badass yes. jet. The cool thing about, about this was that James Cameron called up the United States Marines and said, hey, I'm doing this movie. I've got a scene where I have a Harrier in it. Is there any way I can borrow a Harrier? <laughs> can, you imagine, can you imagine the cojones on that? So, hi. I'm random guy from Hollywood. <laughs> what year? This was 90... 1994. 
Did he just was that Colin Powell at the time? Did he just like yeah, yeah was, call, was hey Bush Colin, era. hey what's up, buddy? So <laughs> the it, it rough it costs roughly no. two thousand no. dollars per minute to rent the Harrier, and the U.S. government said, you know what? Throw us a hundred thousand dollars, we'll give you two. So he got two Harriers for a hundred thousand dollars. He paid out of his own pocket, apparently. And then he had the U.S. government make a full-scale model of one of the Harriers so they could do the scene where atop the, uh, the, yeah. the building. And they could destroy the shit out of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, it is. It was really, really cool. So, okay, maybe there's a little bit of continuity that I just wasn't quite picking up. Did they just blow up an island? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah the, the island keys, went. Yeah. So one of the one of the 12 miles out. Okay. So, all right. Incidentally... For those of you listening at home, yeah. you can't just stand outside the immediate blast radius no. and walk away. I guarantee that's the last child <laughs> either of them had. And one year later, no, 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 no. no they're they're no. both dead. They're all <laughs> like, they're going to the spy meet. They're all like, and the their teens. hair is falling out. <laughs> Teeth. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Gangrous limbs. Uh, that's like where the, the game needs to go next. Their skin is just <laughs> cancer. <falling. medicine. laughs> the game. <laughs> Yeah, big pharma. So I, I thought it was hilarious because you're standing there watching, and and you know they they make the comment that that the Look anyone away. anyone within 12 miles is gonna is gonna be dead. So they're standing there, and you see the shock wave like come up right up to where they're standing, and then it just disperses. Well, it does like, dissipate, oh, they're right but the radiation. Doesn't I know. Stop. <laughs> I mean, whatever. We didn't know shit about fuck in the 90s, <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine because the internet will be around forever. Um, I imagine that people listening who are like historical archaeologists who are listening to our shit 30 years from now are going to go, you fucking morons. <laughs> Speaking of fucking morons. Go. Both I'll, the girl the and the terrorist at the end of the movie, they're climbing on that yellow thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a walkway yeah. on it. You see it in the shots. She was so small. She could have just darted the, in the, and the ran crane. along the walk. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. There's a safety walkway. There was nothing obstructing them from using it. I just would have thrown the fucking key. I wouldn't have. I'd just, fuck it. Bye. See you later. Well, the key's only the only thing keeping her alive. Yeah, he just would have shot her. She just had to get to the fucking walkway and run away. Well, the walkway has an end, too. But Yeah, I know. But it, it, yeah, the it, shots yeah. are showing her climbing, and you're looking. You see the walkway. They don't Alignment it teenager. <laughs> <laughs> they don't always think. Okay. Terrorist. Should have been like... I'm going to step into the walkway. And <laughs> Which was over. odd because he was really well organized. He was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I liked his speech. The speech was good. <laughs> it's, it's got some points to it. Do you mean the speech where he and his friends for five straight minutes shoot bullets up into the air inside a building? Yes. They were outside. No, no, no. They, they were, were inside, inside the a building. warehouse when they were yeah, doing that. It's not that. their warehouse, and they were going <laughs> to blow up the <laughs> island. Fuck it. Yeah. But there's like 30 dudes in there with automatic weapons firing straight up. That's well, the thing. How is there a roof? They, again, they're about to blow up the island in yeah, a ball but of the nuclear roof fire. Didn't fall in on them. There was no it's, debris. It's sheet there metal. Was... <laughs> that's like a quad bullets, set hot style. Bullets roof. that go up, yeah, fall down. Yes, but they've moved it by that point. Five straight minutes <laughs> firing bullets into the air. Those bullets should have fallen down and started. I just found their it skulls. interesting that nobody stopped yeah. to reload. <laughs> well, you know, movie bullets. Movie bullets. Yes. <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis actually celebrated her birthday by doing her that that helicopter stunt nice. there at the end. Uh, I can think she, of worse she ways. Turned thirty six years old when she did that stunt, and uh, so young. Yes, and James, I remember thinking when I first saw that movie, I'm like, "Wow, she's old, but she's hot." Yeah, and now I'm like way beyond that. <laughs> <laughs> and James Cameron suggested to her to to do that stunt. And she initially balked at the idea. You know, that she didn't want to dangle from a from a helicopter, and she turned to James Cameron and said, so where the fuck are you going to be while all this is happening? He said, I'm going to be in the helicopter with a handy cam filming you. And she went, <laughs> well, fuck, if you're going to be there, okay, I, can, I guess I can do this. And, and, Wait, and she, she did. That was her? Yeah, that was her. Holy shit. And uh, the, when, the, when, you're, when, at that, when they pull out, when, they're, when they're after Schwarzenegger has a hold of her and they're, they're, the camera's panning out and you see uh, Tom Arnold's character, that's actually James Cameron standing there. He's in, in you know, Arnold's character and Arnold's outfit. Oh, okay. So I can't worry. Can we right talk now. about how wrong the dance scene was though? For him to pull that? Okay, you are a high priced call girl. 
and then he makes her and it, and like even Tom Arnold knew Tom yeah. Arnold knew. Tom Arnold was, like, was the I'm, conscience I'm, I'm, I'm in this movie I'm going to hell for this <laughs> <laughs> I love the guy who was recording the voice he's like what is this bullshit well, yeah. I, I think it's funny he's like did Harry write this and he's just like shut up go back to work <laughs> yeah there the, the was a couple ethically wrong moments oh, in the, the movie him wanting to get revenge at his wife for lying to him when he's been lying to her for 15 years i mean come on oh, dude. putting the the the, <laughs> the tracking device in her purse uh-huh. the audio device in her purse well at that time he thought she was cheating not it wasn't a lying thing okay yeah so it's, right. it's a little different you know eh. the yeah. body count in this movie is 90 just mooks fairly you know impressive and it was the first film with a production budget of over $100 million. Yeah, it was. I remember it being a big deal. This was my junior year in high school. Yeah, this 94 came out. was junior, yeah. senior year, yeah. I was 14. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you young pup! And it This did, was a movie that I snuck into the theater to see. It yeah. did garnish a... I Oscar, imagine it made its money. Uh, well, we haven't gotten to that yet. Uh, it did get a, an Oscar nominee for Best Special Effects, but it lost that year. To what? what? Forrest Gump. <sighs> special effects? It lost special effects. You, have, you, have you watched Forrest oh, Gump? Forrest Gump is probably one of my top 20 movies. Uh, there's a lot of computer merging Re- okay. CG, like where he's it was with early Kennedy. CG. Uh, there's a lot uh, of, of, right. of okay. yeah, historical yeah. Yeah. putting in of, of time. I can Hanks. see that. Subtle special effects, I think, probably should Yeah, it's not like explosions. Red Dwarf level yeah. of special <laughs> effects <laughs> where they're just yeah. like... They're literally okay. standing in front of a screen of 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 like Nazis yelling. I take it yeah. back. No, and, yeah, and this is the only time that James Cameron has been nominated for an Oscar for like special effects and lost. Like every one of his movies has has made an Oscar and gotten a, received an Oscar in some capacity. Jamie Lee Curtis, however, did win a golden Golden Globe for her performance. Nice. Yeah. She she gave an outstanding performance. Did. Arnold did very well, but. This was this was one of his his breakouts where we were discovering that he was actually capable of doing more things as an actor. Yes, than just being you know Get to the Arnold, just being Arnold. <laughs> I like at the end uh, where he's thumb wrestling his uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and yeah, his daughter. At the same he's time. got these crazy fucking eyes. He's like, ah, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> he, he does look ridiculous, he looks insane. <laughs> I wonder what it would be like to live with him. Like just to be married. Just 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 to be married to him or in some kind of a relationship. I don't know. Ask his maid. And G-gunk. see that level of of human interaction on a daily basis. I wonder if that's just how he is when he laughs. I like to think so. Yeah, so do I. This is also the second movie where the he it ends and Arnold Schwarzenegger is standing within a blast zone of a nuclear bomb. What's the other one? Predator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He survives the nuclear blast in Predator. To be fair, the to blast fair. in Predator, we don't know if it was a nuclear or alien magic. That was a nuclear you know? bomb. Yeah. I mean, you even see the mushroom yeah. cloud at the end. Okay. All right. Not not to pull my own to be fair, but to be fair. To be fair. Well, many actually, many things will actually make a mushroom cloud. It's just a kiloton yield at that true. point. So. Yeah. Yeah, you are true. <laughs> this was also one of the uh, last first run films to have a 70 millimeter release, which so I would love like the Hollywood theater here in town would to do were to do a 70 millimeter showing of this. And I if, would if it did, you it. would want to find out about it a month in advance yes. and buy tickets within the first five minutes that they go. Yep. And James Cameron always sell out personally yeah. paid for 16 of those 70 millimeter prints out of his own pocket. Well, you know, I mean, cool. it was James Cameron at that point. This was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He wasn't like uh, struggling. He, this was pre Titanic. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This was 94. Yeah. Titanic was 97. But still, so. though, I mean, pre Titanic was not nothing. Well, I, I mean, mean pre Titanic yeah. was. He still had Terminator 2. <laughs> he he yeah. still had his chops in by yeah. then. Yeah. Terminator 2 was 92, and a- Aliens was 88, and then yeah. Terminator 2, and then True Lies, and then Titanic. So yeah. he had steadily gone up the stair staircase which is you know he does love shooting up office buildings who you know <laughs> he just likes shooting up he, everything. he likes to pander to americans and a lot of americans work in office buildings True. And if you, <laughs> go ahead sorry and if you blow up the things that people hate odds are they're gonna like it true. he he doesn't pander as bad as michael bay does this is true michael bay is that low sweeping shot where the flag is in every single frame 
and it's you know i rarely watch michael bay movies yeah I, I just cameron I, cameron is a few steps above michael he, bay he oh, is, I think he's he a multiple is steps action above. but he's good you know <laughs> I'm, i didn't i didn't say good or bad i'm just yeah. saying that he's he does pander more towards the america fuck yeah so i mean i'm all about america fuck yeah myself yeah. but at the same time i don't want to be stupid about it <laughs> so speaking of america fuck yeah i understand that there was supposed to be a sequel but there was supposed to be a sequel uh, after titanic was done and he made his bajillions off of that and really solidified himself as one of the top-notch action directors. Of, Not just that. He was a golden boy. Yeah, yeah I mean, he really was. Well, pretty much everything gold. he was touching yeah. Was, yeah. was gold. Um, when you become bankable in Hollywood, where they just say, I want to do this, and they go, this is going to make money, and then they throw money at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was going to be a sequel. It was supposed to take place in 2002. And it was just a few years later, and it was what was going to happen with, with the Tasker family. Let's not get into that, because we'll use that later. And get into what? The, Tasker, the Tasker family? Oh, that's all I was oh, going to yeah. say. Oh, well, anyway. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's roll with this punch, shall we? 2002 <laughs> is one year after. 9-11, and that's yeah. why it got canned. Because yeah. James Cameron said at that point, yeah. terrorism is no longer funny. So we, I'm not going to do a, a movie about terrorism. It's it, totally we, funny when it happens everywhere else. Haven't we said this on a previous episode? We, we have said it on something about on another one. Yeah, I terrorism. Don't you, you made comment. Die about hard. It. Yes. Yeah. 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 There was the whole thing about terrorism. You were mentioning yep. that terrorism was not funny. Yeah. And he also he got he caught a lot of flack from a lot of Middle Eastern groups for this movie that they were that he was doing a stereotype of Middle Eastern. Uh, persons and they were only terrorists and that they were you know un- unclean and uh, unshaven you know men that just wanted to shoot up the world and he didn't really kind of want to get that backlash again it was mostly i think entirely brown people that died in this movie so yeah um Fair. guards at the beginning yeah the guards in the uh, beginning were, okay. were yeah. german i don't I, know. I suppose yeah i heard german so yeah could have been austrian yeah could have been arnold's <laughs> home country yes. i don't know <laughs> Well, we're running pretty long here. You got anything else? They for were us, competitive Dustin? skiers. That's all I know. <laughs> uh, the um, oh, and I've wrecked a snowmobile. They don't explode. They just fall apart because they're mainly plastic. The budget for this movie, uh, it, as I said, as I did state, it was over a hundred million dollars. It was the largest at that time. It was one hundred and fifteen million. The opening weekend was a little weak. It was twenty five million for nineteen ninety. Well, today it'd be weak. Nineteen ninety four. That was a, a good week, opening weekend of twenty five million. The gross USA brought in 146 million, and then the cumulative worldwide gross was 378 million. So it did make it back. Nice. Yeah. Uh, there and some change. There yeah. was talk of a True Lies TV series going into 2007, uh, 2008, the 90s 2009. was a really bad time for that. Well, no, coming into into the first part of the, of, of the 2000s, and it was supposed to follow their daughter. Like it was like, and, and Schwarzenegger and, and Julie Curse would do a cameo. Like she was going to go off to be like an FBI agent or a CIA agent and kind of follow you off. Just her. get agents of shield with that. And yeah. yeah. And it was dropped. And now it's actually a per ID, I, IBDM. It's there's a resurgence in it. So there might be a TV series of true lies. I mean, it was a good flick. Yeah, it, it was, but it was, it was because of the double standard. Uh, Cause what separates this from bond is, He's a family man. He is not a um, a spy twenty four seven, and I, I I think that that was an important distinction that this movie made is that the people who do these jobs have, you know, they have a life outside of it. You go to work, you punch in, you punch some some baddies, and then you go back home to presumably a, a wife and two point five children. Yeah, There's... alias is basically that. Yeah. If it had, instead of Jennifer Garner, starred like Eliza Dushku, Mm -hmm. it could have been that show. I can't say that name without grinning. (laughs) There is one more thing. I think there was a lot of more, there was more backlash on this saying that the movie was sexist and misogynistic. uh, Yeah, a bit. And and, and there was, there was some parts of that. And after they were done filming. I mean, not Conan level. No. (laughs) And James Cameron was going through the editing. He realized this was not so much of a spy movie about Schwarzenegger's character, but it was more of a love story between the husband and wife. So he called up Schwarzenegger and said, Hey, I know you have top billing on this, but this is a love story between your character and Jamie Lee Curtis's character. Would you mind if I gave Jamie Lee Curtis top billing on, on the poster? 
And Schwarzenegger was like, yeah, that please go ahead. That's awesome. Do that. And Jamie Lee Curtis apparently cried at that because that was one of the first times she had been given top billing on any. That's kind of how movie. I felt when Kevin Sambietta sent us a personalized <laughs> drawing. <laughs> Speaking of Kevin Ciambietta. Yes, let's, let's speak of Kevin Ciambietta. Let's take this to the gaming table. Hi, this is Matthew. Thanks for listening. We wanted to take a moment to talk to you about uh, one of our sponsors, Guardian Games. Guardian Games has been with us since the very beginning of this show. Guardian Games is Portland's premier game store. They have magic miniatures, shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of RPGs, all the gaming swag, anything you could possibly want for your gaming experience. If you're ever in Portland and looking for a gaming store, Guardian Games is the biggest, most diverse store in Portland. You definitely owe it to yourself to go to Guardian Games. Well, Dusty, once again, tell us about the characters. So we have, topping off and leading off, we have Arnold Schwarzenegger as Harry Tasker. The, the, uh, if that is your real name. <laughs> Lindquist. Yes, Renquist. <laughs> Lindquist. <laughs> um, yeah, this, is, this, is, this was a good role for Schwarzenegger, I think. I always, I've always liked this. I've liked this he character. He fulfilled it well. Yeah, he did. You know, as a career politician, it was interesting seeing him step off of the political stage and try acting for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the only one, baby. <laughs> you know, this was before he was the governor, right? It's, it's, it's like kicking a puppy. We just have to stop. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> That was sarcasm. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So I, some, some social some, cues, baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I think every actor turned like politician has ended up oh, a Republican. Okay. I get, I'm sorry. I just like that. That went over my head. I don't, I'm sorry. It did. Was, it, was Jesse Ventura a Republican? Yeah. No, hard, Jesse Ventura is a weirdo, <laughs> but he is a hardcore. He was a hardcore Republican. Okay. All right. Was he? And, yeah. I thought he was just a psychopath. But he's also weird. He's also a fucking he's, conspiracy theorist. He is. Yeah. Like, massive. Like, uh -huh. he's a tinfoil hat guy. He, Jesse Ventura? Jesse Ventura, please to, don't pick up my car. <laughs> <laughs> he went out to uh, Groom Lake and, like, went right up to the restricted area and had and had the, the MPs from, you know, Area 51 come out and tell him, fucking leave and he had, he had this like camera crew he wanted to debunk the or show that there were aliens and that we stole technology he it, you should hear him talk about 9-11 and chemtrails yeah and, he's he's the whole he's like one step away from flat earth yeah and he, that's not a very far step for him oh by the way flat earth people <laughs> don't pick up his car <laughs> well i mean it's going to be a long walk around the edge <laughs> once you get here <laughs> Don't get up in that plane. The whole thing falls apart. Alignment. For oh, Tasker? Yeah. Oh, can it good. Can it good. Yeah. 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 I mean, sure, he, he, he serves he was, the government. He was, he was but... for the greater good, but he lied. Well, also, he, he frequently broke away from the plan. Like, why, why'd you blow everything up? Oh, because that whole you're fired or whatever yeah. he did. Or when he, oh, what, can we see your, was, what was the, the janitor line? still in that office building when he yes. launched? Yeah. Yes. He turned around and was like, what? <laughs> yeah. No, he but came was, out and looked at the edge. Yeah. Oh, can we see your invitation? Boom. Here's yeah, my invitation. Right there, yeah, boom. And then Tom Arnold's like, why'd you have to do that? <laughs> right out yeah. the front Definitely. door. Definitely. Ballsy. I like it. <laughs> Definitely chaotic. And then we have Jamie Lee Curtis as his wife, Helen Tasker. Lawful good. Lawful, Lawful good. good. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis now, being she was Halloween, right? Yeah, she yeah, was yeah. Halloween. Was she not trading first places? That? Um, no, no, really? Yeah, she was. That was her. Well, yeah, she was also teen. Yeah, but so uh, okay. Um, now I have a question uh, with this. Yes, lawful good. I completely agree with that. But there, towards the end, wouldn't didn't she have a maybe a switch to chaotic good? Where? when she was killing people and where she fumbled on her role and killed people and then fumbling and, on a role doesn't change her and alignment. Then at the end where she became a spy where she is a spy no she's not lying to anyone or anyone important she's okay. not lying to her family okay. yeah yeah i mean no she's she's lawful the entire time throughout the movie she's lawful good like she yeah. she wasn't even cheating on her husband nope. you know nope. she was nope. She was there to help the used car salesman who she thought was a spy. And when he tried to press his agenda, 
She said no because yeah. the laws and mores that I adhere to say no, no yeah. matter that. And she did admit to being attracted to him, yeah. but she still didn't because yeah. it is that would be because she loved. Her, yeah, she well, loved. not only that, but she'd be breaking her customs. Her yeah. yeah. And then no, we have awful as fuck. Tom Arnold as Albert Gibb Gibson. Kind of good. Kind of good. good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I again, he helped with all the lies. I he was really like, I really like Tom Arnold in this. In, in this, part. <laughs> I liked him getting kicked in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> I do like when he gets, gets shot or he's getting shot at, and he's he's big old oh, Tom the, Arnold the post, yeah. hiding yes. behind the skinny post. <laughs> he's like, oh, oh, and he checks himself. Oh my god! And then he and then he kisses, he like kisses his hand yeah. and taps and goes, "Thank you." Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Bill Paxton, one of James Cameron's favorite character actors bill paxton as simon the used car salesman uh scumbag (laughs) (laughs) chaotic neutral yeah 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 he was just in it for himself 100 percent. some of those lines like we were saying earlier (laughs) ask like a 10 year old boy what who says that what does that mean paxton says that (laughs) i gotta pay for the teeth come on (laughs) Oh, I just had a horror. I wonder if what, he what, had lived what, what, what did you? What, what was your horrible thing? You know who could have played that? Who? And who really could have delivered that line? Who? Think of House of Cards. Uh, oh. Too soon? It's too I, soon. No, it's never it? too soon. Honestly, damn. I thought you were about to say Jared. No. <laughs> no. I don't care about him. Fuck him. And then. Uh, I'm sure somebody is. Yeah. And then the rest are kind I of. I mean, if you go to jail and your catch line. It's five dollar foot long, <laughs> dude. You are you are You're very done. in a literal sense. You are boned. <laughs> so there's other characters. The yeah, uh, but everyone else is pretty guy. much an NPC. Uh, the computer guy. I know Faisal. Faisal. Yeah. Fi- uh, Faisal. That was played by Grant Heslov. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he, was he really a? a uh, yeah, he was he, a PC. Would he be, he would he be a player character? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Yeah. Oh, I I agree completely. Yeah, yeah. was he it was he the guy that he like was shows the, up every once in a while and you just throw him in? The the team mm-hmm. are all PCs. Yeah, okay. In, in my opinion, all right, all right then. And I have him as lawful good. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he was an, he was he was just he was just a, the computer hacker. He's and you're forgetting one. I can go with that. Yeah, Tia Carrere. What ever happened to Tia Carrere? She did the sequel. Okay, she one of the next movies that she did. Uh, major movies that she did. <laughs> she became Tia Tequila. <laughs> <laughs> she did oh <laughs> uh, Cole the Conqueror, which was supposed to be Conan the Conqueror. Yeah, and yeah. Then they changed it because Schwarzenegger didn't want to do that, and he got into being govern- the governor. Yes. But she went on to do uh, uh, Cole the Conqueror and a couple other movies that were just more Walmart kind of been. Did she just not age well or something? I mean, because she was, for a while there, she was she was a hot she was, item. Yeah. She was I, Miss Hotness of the 90s. I think yeah. she it was that because Hollywood's like it. that. Yeah. I mean, when, when just, it goes away, they're they're done with you. At least if you're a woman, yeah. And, you might I mean, end up maybe like, she didn't well, want we to can have the talk about how fair or not that is because we all know that's kind of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. maybe she didn't want to play the games that Hollywood wanted her to play to get the lead, the the the, the bigger roles. Probably, yeah. Probably. yeah. I, I can see that happening. Yeah. She's a very attractive woman. She and she has and she's a good actress. But I mean, if you look at her IMDb, it's a, it's a lot of. C and D level movies. Yeah. I mean, she it, probably, it's kept her work. Yeah, that that she but she didn't play ball. Yeah, I mean, it's kept her working, and she you know makes good money, but it's not the the the, the big because she did Wayne's World and she did this and. Well, Tia, uh, I hope uh, I hope nothing bad happened to you. And then we have Eliza Dushku as Dana Tasker, which teenager, teenager, yeah, um, chaotic raccoon. Yeah, <laughs> I, so yeah. as it came up, I I saw what she looks like now and she still has those same weird eyes she was yeah it's eliza dushku she yeah. went on to do Wait, was Buffy. she ever was she ever like a, a sex symbol or anything yeah well okay, okay. I am depends so on what turned you say off by, by her face well, depends on what you say okay hold on hold on let's depends on what you say by sex symbol she did well not she like marilyn monroe level but alternate. has she ever been a heartthrob i don't think so okay i, I, I think so well okay our personal levels of attraction. Yeah, I don't is... think she ever was classified as a sex symbol in Hollywood. Okay. She she did some some roles that had some sexiness to them. She she did uh, a number of Joss Whedon things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she went into uh, she recently was attached to Michael Weatherly's series the Bull. He played on he played Denozo on NCIS, yeah. but she left that amid allegations of uh, sexual harassment. Yep. She recently came out and tweeted that uh, Schwarzenegger's uh, stunt coordinator, his double, 
on this movie actually because she filmed this movie at, at the age of 12 yeah sexually abused her yeah i he and, was i heard stories about that yeah let's, and yeah let's table that table that that's fine no, yeah that was a that was a big thing actually yeah but good on her for for mm-hmm. actually coming out and and saying something about that but she, all right now i feel bad that i said things about her face don't worry about <laughs> it but she also just probably like tia Carrere. she didn't want to play the hollywood game yeah and you know don't blame them no neither do i uh, and then everybody else is just kind of NPC, except for the great late Charlton Heston, even though he was an NPC, very brief. But uh, Hold on. We're, we haven't talked yeah. about the villain. We always talk about the villain. Yeah, you guys, you just have this blind spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Art Malik, uh, Salim Abu Aziz. He was the, the, the bad guy. Aziz! Light! <laughs> Nuclear light! <laughs> uh, chaotic evil, maybe? Lawful evil? Lawful neutral. Lawful neutral. Yeah. I, you Redressing guys always the had... wrongs do, done to his country. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, actions. That was the big thing that you talked about in the last episode. Is that actions make you? His actions were pretty vile. They were vile. They were destructive. He's there bombing people, and it's not a state of war. So it, he might have seen it as such. I but mean, actions. I think that he was definite. I would say that he is evil. I mean, he was talking about yeah. raining fire down yeah. on the United the States. The people who destroyed his country. No, I get that. I know. Uh-huh. Do you though? Do you get it? Cuz I don't think either of you get it. Are we going to have this conversation again? I just again? cannot say that the bombing, the the free bombing and raining fire upon civilians is a non-evil act. And if it were so then if it were why the, are we yeah. the good guys? Well, I don't Why think that we are when we evil. bomb civilians either. So the people who are working to enforce our government's edicts, the Omega, are not good? Did they bomb civilians in this movie? They killed guards. <laughs> They're not in the military. They killed people that were trying to kill them. Who they had they already all gone bad. and killed. Because they were all bad. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> it's like arguing with kindergartners. <laughs> Guys, take an ethics class. <laughs> no, I, I, get, I, I, no I, get I do. I, I get it. And I have taken ethics class. I, think, I do get yeah. it. I may not sit here and go through the full discourse with you on it. But well, that's I do what makes get it, it interesting. No, I understand that. I do get it. It's, it's one of those things where it comes down to uh, I, you're going to kill me at some point. You're going to try and kill me. And I know this. And you're a good guy. <laughs> But fuck you, I'm going to kill you first. So whether, how does that make him evil? Just the way he's going about it. I, it would be different if I could just, like, if I'm going, okay, I'm going to shoot you with a gun, but instead I, I strap a stick of dynamite up your ass. I don't think this conversation is going to go well. I, and I, I don't think that you're going to change my mind. I think he's evil. I will say evil. No, I'm not yeah. trying to change. I'm not oh, trying no, to change not your mind. I think okay. Matthew likes to to push the uh, the contrary thing on he, Matthew likes villains and, <laughs> I do I have he a wants great to bomb deal all the of civilians. sympathy for the villains <laughs> Matthew thinks he's a villain and he's not <laughs> Just well. wait just wait <laughs> <laughs> I just cuz I don't have the money doesn't mean I don't have the <laughs> But I will say aside from that all the other characters would be NPCs I can't think of anybody else that would be Agreed. noteworthy yeah. I mean Charlton Heston's as cool he, as he, he wasn't is. there enough no, he's, he's an a NPC. quest giver yeah, yeah. He was an NPC. So taking this one um, and giving it an adventure, honestly, this one's too easy. You could take any Bond plot. Uh, you could run any of the back of Ninjas and Super Spies. Um, you could... Thanks again, Kevin. Uh, <laughs> you, you, there's, there's a lot of things you can do. Apparently there was a sequel. Uh, there was a television series like the, in that they talked about that never happened. But just look up the basic plots of those, run something like that. One thing you do want to do is you want this to be a team. This isn't the Harry Tasker show. Agreed. This would be um, a couple, possibly with the daughter. And then the other NPCs would be like the the Faisal type. And uh, I wouldn't say that Faisal would be an NPC. I would have to. No, no. The other player characters would be the Faisal. I thought you said the other NPCs. Uh, Oh, no. Just hearing your name everywhere. Hey. <laughs> and and, uh, and the Albert type. You wouldn't even have to play these characters. But just, you know, a clandestine government agency. I mean, you could play Remo Williams the Destroyer this way. Um, you, you could play any of the, the secret agents attached to the government this way. And there is a huge amount of games devoted to this oh, kind of play. Yeah. Pick one up. Crack a cover. There's your plot. Fair enough. 
I mean, I can I can think of two off the top of my head that I would that I would pick on this. Yeah. Before we get into the actual specific game, let's let's carry on this conversation a little bit more about the themes that we want to bring out. So, spy stories they're popular. There's Everyone's lots of spy role terrorists. Games. Mm-hmm. However, this needs to be a we want comedy. We want a family aspect to it as well. That that's the thing yeah. that sets this apart mm-hmm. from like the bonds yeah. and everything else is that you don't. You're not living the life of a spy. You're also involved in PTA meetings. You're also yeah. involved in making sure that your yeah your kid gets to junior G man training on time. You're also and trying involved. to be home on time for at time for yeah, dinner. Yeah, I mean, there's there, there's an element that made this movie unique, which was the juxtaposition of family versus saving the world. Correct. Yeah, you're going to want a. Uh, when you put your story together for the table, regardless of what gaming system that you use, you're going to want to sit down and talk about the fact that you're going to want this game to have comedic moments. It doesn't necessarily need to be a slapstick style of game. We're not going full spies like us or anything. A a lot of this felt like um, these were player jokes. Yeah, they were, they were the the, the goofy barbarian looked and said, (laughs) <laughs> Looked at the DM and goes, "You're fired." <laughs> <laughs> I'm <hit> the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, but this is also the kind of game, or you yell at the horse. <laughs> this is the kind of game where a player can make one of those jokes, and the GM goes with it, and, and like, yeah, totally shit, like that happens in the game because everyone needs to be bought into the fact that there's going to be moments of zaniness. Yeah. There is levity. In yeah, this. there needs to be an investment yeah. in it. Yeah, this is a game you're going to go into it knowing that the good guys are pro- the good guys, the heroes, the an- the protagonists are Thank probably you. going to win. You're not going into some kind of a brutal, realistic HBO modern HBO no, television show all. kind of story. You're going into something that has levity, and there's plenty of systems out there that can do that. It depends on how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go and how much balancing you as a group want to do at the table to either counteract some brutal game rules or counteract some of the sillier game rules. So it it would work if you find a game that balances it all together. Doesn't really focus so much on blood and guts, but also doesn't focus on pies in the face. It should also be noted that this is a uh, this is a non-fantastic world. That's, that's just true. a modern yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, non- so if if you're dealing with vampires and if you're dealing with extra dimensional beings, yeah, no, no, because no. then you're after cut out a lot of the game, and you don't have to do that because there is a wealth of games that will conform straight to this. <laughs> and let's take this back to episode one. Feng Shui two could do this. I don't want to. We always bring up Feng Shui two because it is basically the perfect Hollywood action movie game feng shui 2 could do this i would not choose feng shui 2 for this i would definitely choose it for something more big trouble in little china or fifth element not so much for yeah. mm-hmm. for this I, I want more of uh this is a, top a, a table secret story. yeah that's, yeah. The, I, that's there where, was, the, the where i was gonna go with was either top secret or modern d20 modern d20 could pull it off i think that modern d20 would pale in comparison to something derived from it spycraft you okay. could use the Spycraft system yeah. mm-hmm. if you want something more D20 inspired. Spycraft could pull it off. It's crunchy. So I hope you want crunch in that. And if you want to go super crunchy, I mean, you could use a generic system like uh, the Hero System or some of the older games. The Alternity is one that I was very fond of that you can't really get anymore, but it was a great modern role-playing game. Super crunchy. GURPS. Fuck. There's probably a GURPS True Lies source book out there. Yeah, There's I'm sure there is. There is a GURPS source book for everything. But I, I do I do like you bringing up, up Top Secret because I remember having that one as a kid. Yeah. And you had it in the thick box and it had like, uh-huh. the passport and everything. It in was it. pretty yeah. cool. And, it was and this, really this cool. This is a perfect, that was a, that is a, I know what you're bringing the, the, the winner, but that that would be a, a very good game. I'm also going to say Ninjas and Super Spies. Well, Ninjas and Super Spies is something I want to talk more about oh, in a yeah. minute because it's high on my list. Yeah. I want to give, again, an honorable mention to a game that I have yet to read that everybody keeps suggesting, and that is Action Movie World. It was, once again, even brought up when I was asking around on Twitter and on Facebook and even on our Google Plus page, which still exists. 
for <laughs> another few weeks. Little while. <laughs> you were so invested, dude. I'm so sorry. I'm going and you to have be to depressed. pull that off the website. What? I, Follow or, us on Google Plus. <laughs> It was just you, I've baby. Already, I've already taken out of the post template. Okay. Yeah, mm. I have. Um, yeah. Hey, I, I'm I'm sorry. It's I, I know that was your thing. That, that man, was and yeah. I'm sorry. That was I, okay. And aside about Google Plus, I'm gonna miss it. Much as I miss bulletin boards from the '90s, much as I miss oh, things man. like Live Journal, much as I miss certain MMOs that I played to the last day, things like Heroes. Uh, Heroes was such a good MMO. What was it? You know, WoW's okay. coming back with City, Vanilla. Yeah, City of Heroes. I don't know what that is. Star Wars Galaxies, the original Star Final Wars Galaxies was great. All of those had fantastic final day parties. Yeah. Google Plus is not going to have that, and I'm sad. Oh. Because it's just going to fade out and then vanish. Anyway, I asked on all of the communities, and Action Movie World was one that was recommended. I want to give it an honorable mention because they have yet to read it, but I did just buy it. So I promise <laughs> for the next action movie, <laughs> I will read it for the next action movie that we do. It, it looks pretty cool, but I just gave it a quick skim. It's an apocalypse world powered game. Uh, we've talked about those before. I, I have a question. Yeah. Because I sometimes I, I like this game and I think it can fit a lot. But f- for obvious reasons in the title, it might not work. Would mutants and masterminds work well in this? No, in this no, world? no. no. Okay. In, in fact, if you're going to do mutants and masterminds, you should instead do spycraft. Okay, all right. Because they're both thank derived you. from the same source. Okay, Spycraft thank Spycraft is more built towards that. Awesome. Yeah. Last night when we were watching it, my wife says, this is a game where in every scene, you as a player have to randomly roll on a table to determine what your current mode of transportation is. Because Pretty much. It's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jet. You have a j- <laughs> helicopter, <laughs> helicopter, Yes. Van. Scuba. Yeah, yeah. Every single scene, four by four truck. there's a mode of transportation involved, and it's always a different one. And... That I I would want a game that has good vehicle rules. You know, I mm-hmm. want uh, Spycraft could do that. I uh, the the two that I'm thinking of, I'm, I'm kind of tied on this, and there's a reason I'm tied. Oh, and something you said a minute deal. ago, Matthew. Yeah, I'm tied between Savage Worlds, playing by the book, or Ninjas and Super Spies, because as cool as the other games is, are Mm-hmm. That's where my heart lies. My heart knows ninjas and super spies, yeah. and it's thirty did you play plus it? Did styles you... of hand to hand combat. Did, did you it... play it back in the day? Oh, yeah, yes. me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got that when it came out. It yeah. was I was like ten. <laughs> it was so cool. That game was so awesome, and I'm, I'm I'm torn. And the reason I'm torn is because of what you said, Matthew. This is not a fantasy game. Ninjas and Super Spies has a lot of fantasy stuff in it. It would be really good for a super high tech spy game. Yeah, but so so if you were playing something like Leverage, well, for Leverage, I would use the Leverage role playing well, game. I, I know. I'm just using that as an example of high tech. <laughs> no, we're talking more like high super tech. tech? Than that. Okay, we're talking yeah. like like James Bond. Yeah, okay, or kind of stuff like super spies. Okay, so yeah, to to GI Joe actually to, is okay. a good example. To be fair, um. It's also back in the 90s. So if you were playing something similar now with today's worldview, a lot of the stuff that was super in Ninjas and Super Spies would be just commonplace. Normal. Now. Speaking of today's world, Clint, who is a listener of ours and active on our Discord channel, and today's world being the game that we chose for sneakers, I thought about today's world. And I think he's doing something to change the game. I need to get confirmation from him. I think today's world will probably not quite do this one right because it was definitely more low key focused on sneakers. It could if you focus more on, I think, on the tech crew, but like the super spy stuff, uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we, I'll give it another look. But there is a James Bond role playing game too. And really? Yeah. Yeah, there and, is. But here's the thing it. it's not good. Yeah. It's I like mean, the Indiana Jones. Yeah. It, it was game. It's a one off. And it's just not like it, it sold nothing. I nothing. Yeah, copies go for you know ninety nine cents on Amazon. It's a just, role playing it's, game based on a license really needs to hit at the time that that license is popular. Not only that, it but I mean, it, it has to be it has to be playable. Yeah. So while there there is a James Bond RPG, it's well for for me that's like. We always, we've discussed how much we, you and I, Matthew, love Farscape. 
Oh, Farscape. It's di- I, I, I've tried playing the RPG for Farscape, and I everybody, it. it's a great system, but everybody wants to play Crichton. Everybody wants to be on. on oh, Moya. not me. Uh, everyone that I, oh, you probably want to be a peacekeeper. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you probably want to be Kreis. No, I'd so. be uh, Aaron. Uh, all right. Well, cool. the Farscape role playing game is just D20. Yeah. I'm, what end. I'm saying is, it's, it's when, you, when you go along yeah. with the, the marketing, it's like, Playing the Doctor Who role playing game, playing the Indiana Jones, playing it, playing one of the of few ones that did it right was the one we just talked about yeah. was Serenity yeah. and Firefly. And I was going to lead those, into that. Those that were one the ones it. that actually hit Perfect. it. Yeah. But when you have that marketed um, three pages on how to swear in Chinese, that's what I want difficult. from a role playing game. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have something big backing it like Star Wars, you know, that's go- that has that already true. huge true, true, base. True. Even the Battlestar Galactica RPG that was out for a while, that was out didn't do well. You know what? And I'm, I'm going to say system. there's some, there's some more. And it's Stargate not, was and another it's not one. just because they sent us stuff. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is a fantastic. It's one of my favorite Palladium games. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is very, very, very heavily focused on mutant animals. Yeah, and but, Robotech. Okay, hold you on. Know, there is a system that does this rather well. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> the Palladium system. Uh, also, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was from an early era of certain combat rules. In later editions, yeah, they changed it, it the way change. that I think dodging and like missile volleys and certain things work differently. I'll have to go back and check. Um, Ninjas and Super Spies is basically the same system that they use for Heroes Unlimited. And it's the, again, it's the Palladium system, but that version of character creation with, I, 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 I could be wrong. This, I know I kind of talked myself out of it by saying that you had to, to keep it in there. Yeah. But I will say this. For world building, there is nothing better than Palladium. <laughs> and this is a specific kind of world. And I'm sure I, it's, it's been, what, 20 years since I picked up a copy? Ninjas and Super Spice, I think, is almost 30 years old. Jesus. Yeah, but it's been 20 yeah. years since I picked yeah. up a copy. And um, I think it's 28 or 29 years old. Yeah. I think, if I remember correctly, there are rules about uh, not not having a family but effects for family and relations in in your alter ego true yeah uh, maybe i don't have a copy of the book because no, Guardian I, if, ran if, out but yeah i was i was there <laughs> too there. looking yeah. so um ninjas and super spies was published in 1988 yeah. jesus christ so, uh yeah it's old so anyway How savage I remember it like it was yesterday i'm getting old Savage Worlds is another one I want to talk about. We talk about it a lot, but Savage Worlds is the the combat system in it. Most of the movie where he's getting in fights, those are straight up Savage Worlds style, just murder a horde of mooks kind of stuff. Yeah. And Savage Worlds, if you if you want to play a game where the mooks are just disposable as they are in this movie, Savage Worlds is a good one for that. Though he did get his ass kicked a few times by mooks. You can get your ass kicked easily in Savage Worlds with one lucky roll. Yeah. It's just like I was saying in the first part, when she drops that submachine gun and it yeah. kills everyone, that was one really lucky exploded That role. That was a defining moment. Yeah. Um, the guy in the uh, in, in the mesh shirt, the, the, the knitted mesh shirt in the bathroom, <laughs> that, I mean, that was, he, he got handed. He got handed bad. Yeah, he did. We never talked about the bathroom scene. That was a really well <laughs> shot. That, that was yeah. a well shot scene. That poor guy. Was James Cameron. They were all well shot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. So you have a toss up between Savage Worlds <laughs> and Ninjas and Super Spies. Yeah, Let's think about this, this for is, a second. This is me. Other people might do something like Top Secret or Spycraft. Spycraft's <sighs> perfectly secret, viable. Man. Yeah. I'm, but I, I love we don't me. give a yeah. lot of love to old TSR. You know what we don't give a lot of love to? Huh? Palladium. <laughs> that's bullshit <laughs> um if i personally was doing it i would go with ninjas and super spies that's where my heart lies well then we should do it yeah okay true lies ninjas, ninjas and, and super spies, spies. it rhymes it's right. like poetry yeah there but, you go. <laughs> but but you know if if you want you you could you could totally do it with Savage Worlds, and I understand what you're saying, especially uh, due to style of play and uh, moments in the movie. Yeah, but I I also feel that that can be created. That that's player created. Also, Palladium Any system will do that. Palladium is notoriously low on social skills for characters, but you. It also comes from that era of role playing 
where you as the player were expected to role play encounters. Yeah, instead of just saying, instead of I'm I role play, I, 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 I charm the yeah. yeah. No. So that that's another reason why I think a palladium system could work for something like this because you've got a player at the table who's like. Uh, yeah, I'm going to play the most biggest, baddest Arnold Schwarzenegger looking dude. All right, cool. And then he just sits down at the table and just role plays through everything. And the GM's like, yeah, dude, and just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. No role necessary. That That is yeah. one of the things that I, I do miss about a lot of people that I've, that I've seen, like at the gaming store that are, that are running campaigns. They don't, they're not role playing. They're just... I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Yeah. They don't actually act a character. Now, one of the things I've always liked about role playing with you, and I and I and I've and I've mentioned this a couple of times. How does he make you feel special? <laughs> yeah, he does make me feel special. I want to hear all about it, but talk lower. No, you want me to talk like that. No, don't talk lower. We need the mic okay. to pick no, you no, up. No, just 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 <laughs> just, just make, make it husky. Husky. I don't think I can talk like that. No, now you're just whispering, man. You're ruining it. <laughs> I'm going no, limp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you you've actually had me like like when I I played a, a my my standard go to is a dwarven battle cleric and I had to I was about ready to die in this campaign that Nathaniel was running and I had to a pray to my game. god and he's like all right was so it? pray to your god <laughs> nice and I was like okay well I pray to my god because I wasn't I've never had anyone say you actually need to pray and he's like no seriously. I need you to like pray to your God. And oh like, no, you weren't a dwarven battle cleric. You were a human from a lost era, a frozen in time, reawakened magically human. Was I? You were a human were you cleric guys of Palladian fantasy. You were a oh, human yeah. cleric of dragon right. Oh yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> cleric. Okay. And so you have played a Palladium game. You <laughs> fucking liar. And, no, no. I no. don't remember Filthy. it being Palladium. Filthy liar. <laughs> and I had the gods of Dragon Right yeah. give you different commandments. Jesus. And because you wanted to come back in the heat of battle, it was Zandromus. I think that's the name. The 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 god from, of fire and war. You stole that name. What? You totally stole that Zandromus name. from David. David no. I think, yeah. I can't. I don't remember the. No, it's in Palladium, one of the dragon gods, Is because it? of a Z. I, I, I think I'm getting it wrong. Anyway, it's the Palladium, dra- the cult of dragon right, the pantheon of dragon right, god to dragon. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, uh, I'll no, bring it wasn't you back. Just, no, it wasn't just him. There was like a council of dragons. <laughs> like, I was, like, my spirit went before these, like, four or five dragons. They're like, all right, bitch, tell us why we should put you back in battle. <laughs> Seriously. And I had to, I, had, I actually had to, like, pray out to them why... I should do this. I my my was, first yeah. serious game that wasn't spent either skipping class mm-hmm. at, in <laughs> in the library or uh, at the cafeteria, hurriedly rolling some dice, uh, was with a lady we named Danny that I just actually reconnected with, and um, I played a bard. And you know what she made me do? Mm. She made me sing I was all say, made my sing. spells, and I did it. Nice. Also, Nathaniel, you are the only person that when I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and do this spell. And he's like, do you have the components? And I'm like, <laughs> you really, do I really need to have 10,000 uh, yes. gold pieces worth of diamonds? Are, are you with me? me? If it's not on your character sheet, you don't fucking have it. Oh, I no. give, I it give wasn't some a leeway. It was core math. Oh, you're the, looking uh, it up. Nice. <laughs> no, no. Core math is the, what's it? No. Oh, God damn it. No, oh no, it's Xandragal, not Xandramus. Xandragal is, uh, I, I got it right here. <laughs> Xandragal is uh, the symbol of war and aspects of war that involve cunning, duality, and conflict. Yes, uh, Xandragal gave you a commandment that, okay, you have one year. You yeah. must kill all the goblins. Yeah, and we had a goblin <laughs> in the party. <laughs> it was, it was good. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, and uh, I was like, I'm going to let you, li- I, I, ha- I have to kill everyone in a year. I'm going to let you live and then I'll kill you at the end of the year. Leave on your own accord and never <laughs> return. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good game. And uh, the, again, it was all role playing. That's what I like about the, old, yeah. the older games mm-hmm. that don't have heavy social combat systems where it's role play it out. You know, let's, let's talk it out. You don't even have to be the that's best role the, player, that's but you got to be willing I, I like, to do it. I like the older games that they're still my go-to is because there's, so much more that's left to the interpretation, not of the DM necessarily, but of the player. Yeah. All right, ninjas and super spies. Well, true lies. Yeah. True, true lies. lies. Ninjas and super spies. Palladium, Palladium wins again. <laughs> I would like to go on record as saying 
But this has nothing to do with them sending us a box of goodies. Yeah. It is a good choice <laughs> for this movie. Well, no, and 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 I will vouch for that because we were we were talking about it before the box. We even found out about the box because I think it was at the end when we recorded our last session. You made mention of ninjas and super spies possibly running in this so yeah, it, was, yeah. it was before we even knew about the box so i, I, I vouch yeah. yes and i i will say that my geekdom just went through the fucking roof thanks again you guys <laughs> you, again. you guys are just this is, it was amazing you've always been my heroes and you the, this was a good day i i i will i can lean in and say that i've probably been converted now yes i will i will, <laughs> I will, I will I mean, you've you've played a game already, and I'm just well, saying. my my one that you my remember grow- fondly. Yeah, my, my dad. growing up best friend. It was like, no, we're gonna play this game, and it was the Palladium one. It had this the dragon on the front cover, and it was just like a eight dragon hours. on the cover. And it was just like eight hours later, we hadn't even played yet, and I was like, no, come on, this is too much. Let's just let's do something. Go back. To Sorry, I'm, I'm digging through Nathaniel's <laughs> dice tray. I can tray. hear it. This <laughs> real cool one. Yeah, there's it looks some like a board cube. Yeah. yeah, it's a D6, and it's badass. All right. Well, All let's right. go ahead and close this out. But one thing we forgot to do is rate it. Um, so out wait, of how wait, many wait. lies? How many? Uh, out of <laughs> no, how no, many no, lies? No, 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 no. We can do better. Yeah, we can do better than that. Out of how many awkward dances? Awkward dances? Ten, ten, how many? Okay. I, I, Dark, sure. Why not? Or, I mean, we could do that. Was that? Was there? Was how many there bad? Gimmick? How many bad Arnie tangos? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How, how many, many bad? Yeah, how, many, yeah, how many bad dances? How many bad? Because <laughs> Jamie Lee Curtis pulled one off too. She saved yeah. it at the end. Yeah, but yeah. okay, I, I I'd give it a solid eight bad dances. Because there there were some for me there were some technical aspects that dropped it a little bit. But so it's so overall eight. If we're just looking at the movie and the story, I'd give it nine. I'm gonna go with nine. It wasn't perfect, but it I'm was gonna go with awesome. a seven. Really? Yeah. I, I like the movie. I it was actually one of the first movies I ever bought on DVD. I liked it when it came out at the time, and I still like it today. Mm-hmm. But it's not an amazing movie, and I think it it takes away from truly amazing movies when I rate so high. So it, okay. it was a good movie. It was a solid movie. I'll give it a B. I see your reasoning. I'm tempted to change it, but I'm going to stick on my gun. No, say that's nine. okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'm I'm nobody has any reason to be embarrassed by this movie (laughs) no this was a good solid movie but it is not it wasn't it wasn't that good i gotta save the superlatives for the superlative well let's talk about how you can interact with us after this episode we have an active discord community that we're growing and trying to get more people to join in and say hello if you are with us in the google plus community hey join discord because google (laughs) plus is going away (laughs) And we've got lots of people joining. We've got people talking. We we discuss the movies. We welcome you to join us and maybe you can actually point, help. Yeah. Like we we, yeah. we talk about the things that we are going to talk about on the show. And a lot of it is crowdsourced. So if you want <laughs> if you wanna put your two cents in, that's the place to do it. We also have a Patreon campaign that is small but growing and we're really, really guys, next really episode, happy. I get my pizza. And yes. Donnie, I know some of that was you, baby. <laughs> you, I'm gonna mouth your name while I eat that fucking pizza. I'm be like, actually get about Donnie. three pizzas in one sitting. <laughs> no, no, no. We we need some gear around here. I, yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just want a pizza. Just one. Just one. Pizza, pizza. Hot and ready. And Rex, thanks again. Yeah, thank you. And you, Kevin. Mm-hmm. Wherever you are. <laughs> I, I like to think that he's somewhere like on a placid beach in Taiwan just writing out something that's going to happen in the 79th rifter oh this guy <laughs> this guy likes my game here sign by <laughs> I don't care it's fantastic but yeah, yeah, I like it picture is him awesome. out on a beach somewhere having a good time yeah, yeah. yeah. alright thanks everyone we'll catch you next time I was Matthew and I was Dusty and I'm Nathaniel we'll see ya thanks for listening to another episode of our show We're still pretty new to the scene, and we'd love to get your feedback. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes with your thoughts. Good or bad, they really help us get the word out. If you want to say hello, drop us a line on all of the usual social media sites. You can find the links right there in the show notes. You can also leave us a comment on our website at havemovieswillgame.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Have Movies Will Game is a Breakfast Puppies podcast production, and our episodes are distributed under CCBYND 4.0 license. 
Our opening theme is Rock and Gravel by Sid Valentine's Patent Leather Kids with introductory narration provided by Isaac Scher. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.